What's up guys, Jason Wardrop here and I'm with my good friend Joe. Joe is out of Florida. You're in Florida right now, right? Oh uh, yeah, don't be jealous, don't be hating, you know, it's okay. <laughs> I'm over here in snowy Utah and he's just, you know, out there. He's probably going to go tanning later, hit up the beach and have some fun time. So today we are going to, this is going to be awesome guys. Joe's got a ton of experience in the real estate marketing lead generation industry, which have him talk to that here in a little bit. But one thing that we've been talking a lot about over the last several months and a lot of agents that I talk with where you struggle is really that follow-up process, right? Like anyone can go through, generate a lead, and whether it's truly a Zillow, Facebook, whatever it is, whatever price you're paying, that's great, that's cool. But then once that lead comes in, like how are you actually following up with that? Is it like you give them a phone call, email, text, get an appointment scheduler, Facebook message, like there's so many ways to go through and connect and contact that person. And so we want to dissect what we've seen that's been working recently, what you can try in your business and all that stuff. So um, that's just kind of a quick little intro, guys. And uh, with that said, Joe, give us a little background on you, how you got in the real estate space and what you're currently doing right now. Cool. Well, listen, thanks for having me on the show. Guys, uh, Jason's a genius, so make sure you're watching him every single time he puts out a new video. Um, I'm constantly stealing stuff from him. He just doesn't know it. Anyway, <laughs> that's <laughs> no, good. That's good. But uh, nevertheless, um, yeah, I'm, my name is Joe Gilletti. I'm a third generation real estate investor slash agent. I'm an agent now. Um, my grandfather was an agent back in like the 50s or 60s. My dad worked in that agency his whole life. And then, um, uh, yeah, I love marketing. I really could care less about real estate, but uh, real estate was like the world I knew about. And so, um, Actually, in 2016, I started an agency and um, took it from zero to 80 clients in 2017. And um, now we're on track to close over a billion dollars in real estate in 2018. And most of that is due to the fact of really figuring out the back end follow up. There's a lot of people who can generate leads. There's very few people that can close leads. That's the game changer. And so that's what we're talking about today. Awesome. Well, yeah. So anyway, guys, you hear that billion dollars in 2018, which is super exciting. I mean, that is a... Uh... That's a lofty goal, but they're definitely on pace to, to make that happen. So they're doing some really cool stuff out in Florida. And I know you're you're working with agents all across the country though, right? Nationwide, yep. Yep. So anyway, guys, this this model, if you're kind of like, well, I'm not in Utah, I'm not in Florida. I don't know if this is really going to work for me. It's the same thing across the country, same thing in Canada. We've done stuff in Europe. It, it's across the board. People are people. So you got to go through, interact, behave with them the same exact way no matter what country, what language you're in, whatever you're doing, right? So anyway, so- Jason, if I had a dollar for every time an agent asked me, will this work in my area? Like I would already have a billion dollars myself. You know what I'm saying? I I'm with you. It. I'm with you, man. <laughs> <laughs> so true. So anyway, um, Joe, do you want to just like kind of walk us through, um, you, the lead comes in, they go through, they type in their name, phone, email onto a landing page or something like that. What's kind of like that next process? Give us like the seven day layout and then um, kind of share with us what you're doing right now that you've seen that's been working well. And then I'll share some different things that we're doing. I bet you a lot of stuff is or overlapping. But um, anyway, just kind of like break down that whole strategy of how people can just get going with the, the follow up. Yeah. So, um, I mean, full disclosure, I would say a lot of, of what we're doing because of changes we're making in 2018 aren't even dialed in to the point where we needed to be this good. Like I'm, I'm going to share with you what we're doing, but right now, just to share like our numbers. Uh, and by the way, this really helps Jason uh, with people. I think when they understand the expectation, that was the big problem that started for me in 2017. Let me just share that real quick. In yeah, 2017, for sure. we're doing, we're getting all these great leads. Some agents are doing great. Some agents are doing terrible. We're like, what in the world? So we go ahead and we figure out, okay, there's something going on in the back end. And so we hire an outside company. That way we had consistency to have them follow up on the leads. Well, when they followed up on the leads, we spent $600 and we closed $60,000 in GPI. Well, that's a hundred times ad spend. I mean, you know, yeah. I'm no Facebook master. Maybe I am, but <laughs> that's a pretty good ROI. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. So it's like, I'm not really a master of Facebook. I mean, Facebook, to me, Facebook's the easy part. Yeah. Um, but nevertheless, um, so we realized like, okay, it's not the leads. Like all the agents who are giving up, they're like, dirty, crap, dirty, crap, blah, 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 blah. All right. And I'm just like, there's 
really no such thing as a bad lead. All real estate agents are turning it off now. Sorry, Jason, I ruined your show. But they're all going to say, oh, yeah, well, well, yeah, if it's not the right name or contact information, sure, that's a bad lead. The rest yeah. of them care enough about real estate to fill out their information accurately. Like, that's not a bad lead, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, nevertheless, uh, <laughs> but, but, but here's the thing. This is, this is what's kind of exciting. So I'm looking at that and I'm thinking, well, what if we could do some cool whiz bang stuff? Like what if I had that, that silver bullet, Jason, right? Where I could just solve this once and for all and never have a problem again. And I thought, what if I use messenger bots? Like I on the back end, I got them talking and did all this stuff so that we could convert 5% of our leads to appointments. Now, let me just tell you, as of today, right now, in the last month, our conversion rate is 2%, okay? Two. Mm -hmm. So back at the end of last year, though, I'm like 5%. Have you ever, Jason, just so I'm not doing a soliloquy here, have you ever thought about like what percentage of leads do I actually need to close from the leads that are coming in? You ever, have you ever talked to agents who look at that math? Um, not really. They don't, I, I mean, I know those numbers just because like I get into the analytics marketing and all that stuff, but most age, like, and I actually, I actually shot a video on this the other day where I feel like a lot of times people aren't successful where there's some real estate or anything else because they don't give themselves enough a chance to be successful. Where like, if you go through and you know you only close 10% of phone calls that you're making, but you only make five phone calls, you didn't even give yourself a chance to get one deal. You know, so like, I think, yeah, that, that, that's where a lot of this plays into of just like knowing your numbers and knowing like, okay, if you're gonna generate 100 leads, how many of those hundred are you gonna actually close? And of those hundred, how many phone calls do you need to make to actually make it go? And then at that point, honestly, it's it's easy. It's almost like cheating when you know your numbers because it's like, okay, in order to get one closed deal, I need to generate X amount of leads, make this many phone calls, send maybe this many texts or Facebook messages. And if I just do X, I'll get one deal. And then if I wanna get two deals, I just double it. Three deals, triple it, same type of thing. I don't even understand why you invited me on this program today. You no, no. It, right? like that's, that's it, right? Like, and that's the problem. When you really, and I did this, I did this for nine months with 80 clients and didn't realize just how good everything was. Like I kept questioning myself and I'm like, okay, if I could just convert 5%, that would, and 5% would be awesome. But here's what happened. I ran the numbers because I was, you know, probably average $3 a lead, but I ran the numbers at $5 a lead, which usually are high side. And it's like, Five dollars a lead. We spent five hundred dollars to get a hundred leads. How many of those do we actually have to convert? And usually we're in areas half a million above. I like to focus on higher price. Why not? Yeah. Um, and so here's what I found. I was killing myself to get to five percent. And if I'm at one tenth of that, in other words, one half of one percent, killing the game. Like my ROI is like ten to twenty times. Whatever I'm spending on Facebook ads, I'm getting in closings in the first 90 to 120 days, not even including all of the leads that come later and all of the closings that come later as a result of those. So yep. that, that's the first thing I really want to push. Like, look at your numbers, because I think a lot of times uh, the poverty mindset comes in where you're like afraid to spend the money on ads and you're like, oh, you know, how much, blah, blah, blah. And you're thinking, man, you know. Somebody told a story on Facebook and they got a listing for $1 million and only spent $30 on ads. And you're thinking, hmm, well, man, $30, I could spend $300 and have $10 million listed. And it's like, no, like that's not how it works. Let's get a true average of what it should cost you yeah. to actually close, say, a million dollars in real estate. That way you're thinking about it right before you even get out the gate. And I was doing that wrong. And so yeah. I just like to encourage everybody here to start with knowing, like, what's a reasonable number? Let's take it out of real estate. If you go to a mortgage broker right now and you say, what would be, they have a, a, a metric called cost per finance transaction or cost per finance lead, CPFL. And so if they spend between $1,000 and $2,000 to close a, a mortgage lead, right, let's say $200,000 and above, that's good. Yeah. Right? That's good. Well, same thing for us. Like if you could spend $1,000 to get a $5,000 commission, like, I mean, better than Warren Buffett does, right? Definitely, <laughs> I mean, <it's> definitely. <laughs> so, so that's the thing. So I just want you to start there. Like really question those numbers that you're seeing. Yeah, it's true. People do close transactions for 30 bucks. People do close transactions for a hundred bucks. And I would say it probably is a little bit easier in that hundred to two hundred thousand dollar range. However, like what's the real metric? Is it $500 per transaction? Is it $300 per transaction? And just understand that number and work the averages like Jason said. And you'll feel so much better. And I'm 
talking with this tone. You notice I have a little bit of tone with this, Jason? <laughs> yeah. The reason is because I feel like such an idiot that I missed this. Like, I messed this up big time last year. I was already at the place where I could close a billion dollars. My mind just wasn't right about how yeah. much it would cost me and how to work that metric. So I, I just wanted to start there. I didn't even answer your question yet. Sorry. No, you're good, man. I, I think that was good to get out of the way. Well, get out of the way and also just say it because actually it was coming to my mind before we even jumped on this call of like, oh, I should – we should probably hit like the numbers of knowing your numbers and knowing what you need to do because honestly, all this other stuff is just mumbo jumbo until you actually know those numbers. So anyway. If you're not going to spend 500 to a thousand dollars a month on Facebook, like, I mean, you may close one at a hundred. There's people out there that brag they close at a hundred. I mean, I don't. Uh, but I'm focused on half a million and above, right? Yep. So for us, it's, we're between $1,100 and $2,000 for every million dollars close, which means 10 times our ROI, right? Yep. Um, I mean, I'm sure Jason can crush that, but, you know, I'm, I'm yeah. happy with it. <laughs> no, I, that, that would be amazing. That'd be amazing. I'd be, I'd be totally fine with that as well. Yeah, I mean, guys, and it, if it is $500, so, and by the way, that's in the first 90 days, right? You've got the rest of the year. To nurture the rest of those leads, right? Yep. We're going to talk about how we do that. In order to turn that, I talked to somebody that, uh, earlier today. They were at about 14% of their leads convert over the course of a year. Well, if you got 100 leads, and let's say those leads cost you more than they normally, let's say they cost you $1,000 instead of $500, right? And it's like, if you could get 100 leads and 14 of them close, I don't care what your price point is. Your numbers are going to be fantastic, right? Awesome. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. No, that's killer. Yeah, man. So, um, let's let's hit let's roll into kind of like the the follow-up process so like one first thing that that i would stress and it's funny because i get this i get this question from time to time in our facebook group and people are like oh i generated a lead i'm so excited what should i do now right like the first thing that you should do anytime you get a lead and guys this goes to and, and I've, I've made past videos on this where there's like mit and harvard studies done on this where if you contact the lead within the first five minutes, like the chances of that person actually one, answering the phone call and two, converting into a closed sale. It, I, I can't remember the numbers. I'll have to go get the MIT study, but it goes up it's dramatically. It's like 500 times normal. It's you know what I'm something saying? Something like crazy. that, like 500 yeah. times. So like, it, it's so key. Like as soon as you get that lead, go through. And that's why like all the agents we work with, we have the email and text notification where it's like, Hey, lead just came in. Here's the name, phone number, email address, address, all this info so they can go through and follow up and contact that person right away. So that's number one. And you should have an email, automated email set up. And, and the thing is here, guys, everyone responds a little bit differently. Some people are more email people. Some people want to jump on a phone call. Some people would rather text. Some people would rather Facebook message. So if you can get all these things done like instantly, having an automated email going out, an automated text going out, you're jumping on the phone, and if they don't answer, leave in a voicemail, and then even if you had some way of getting the Facebook message out there to just shoot them a, a quick Facebook message to get in contact, like you don't know which channel they prefer, and so you wanna be able to go cast a broad net. Like back in the day, 20 years ago, right? You only had pretty much phone calls. So you just jump on the phone, or I mean you had an email too, but email and phone calls but now you got like everyone's pretty much more texting everyone's facebook messenger all these other platforms so that is i would say the number one thing is make sure you're on all these different channels of communication and getting your message out there and trying to connect with them and and leave like with value so it's not like you're just another realtor that you know you're not just being that another annoying person right you're, you're wanting to go through add value connect see how you can actually help them I agree 100%. I mean, uh, for the, to me, I always think of five ways, right? You got phone, text, email, retargeting, and messenger. Like, yep. Those are the primary five. In theory, you could send them direct mail if you had access to that information and take every lead and the address and mail it. That'd probably be pretty awesome because I doubt anybody's doing that. We're not doing that. I'm just yep. talking about optimization. But for the most part, it's those five, right? Yep. And we need to talk about what we do with each of those five, but am, like within five minutes, that's huge, right? We already know that. That's like data proven. But I did want to say one thing that a lot of people don't say about this. Every course or thing that I'm looking at of different people who are, you know, leaders in the industry for real estate, 
They always talk about calling the lead. And I, I believe that. I'm not saying you shouldn't call the lead. Mm -hmm. But here's what our data suggests. Um, when, for example, I'll just use the example of the lead that we spent $600, we closed four deals um, and, and had 60,000 in GCI. One of those four deals came from phone calls. Mm -hmm. The others came from text, messenger, and or, and maybe some mix of your thank you page. Um, it's huge, which I know, Jason, you're big on that. Yep. Your thank you page and setting the appointment off the thank you page, that surprisingly happens. So yep. um, phone calls are only responsible as a first point of contact for about 25% of the transactions. I find that people are way more interested in conversing via text and messenger um, immediately as opposed to phone, and then you move it from there to phone, and then from phone to an appointment, right? Yep, love um, but sometimes we're getting appointments directly in messenger, different conversations, and directly in text, because a lot of people prefer it that way. And I think it will continue to move that way. And the real estate industry tends to be backwards and slower, even though there's all these new technologies we're trying to adopt. The mentality of the industry moves more slowly. And so, um, and I can say that I've seen it since my grandfather, right back in the day. Yep. The fact of the matter is, is people are moving away from phone. We all know that. If you got a call yep. from a number you didn't know, the only reason, Mr. and Mrs. Real Estate Agent, you're answering that is because you're hoping that somebody wants you to list their house. Yep, exactly. Yeah, because if it's me, I don't answer any number I don't know. Even sometimes I'll forget that I set up an appointment with somebody across the country that I forgot. And I'm like, uh, oh, oh, wait, crap. I <laughs> actually had an, a meeting with right. that person. So, yeah, I'm with you, man. So, um, Which brings up a really big point, though, Jason. Sorry to interrupt you. That voicemail you mentioned is important. Because if you're going to call, they're, they're not, they're not going to answer, right? Or yep. if they do, congratulations, right? You're probably working with a baby boomer. Um, yep. who's, who's, that might be a little bit easier to close than some of these weird millennials. Like me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but nevertheless, um, that voicemail. And there's one thing that I think we should talk about, like just in that first, well, first of all, to me, and Jason, let's talk about this first. In that first initial thing, if it's text, messenger, email, um, maybe even retargeting a little bit, but primarily those three, my first thing is like kind of a hook. It's kind of like a really, it's like just putting someone out there to see if they'll respond. The people yeah. who aren't responding, they're not, they're not ready to move forward quickly. And you're, in most cases, they become the long game. Yep. People who respond quickly, that first initial conversation or testing, testing, you know, it's like a, two boxers when they jab to see how, how the other guy moves, you know, to see what's going on inside of that exchange. Yep. Same thing with this. You want to put something out there. So the one that I use a lot, and Jason, I'd love for you to share yours, um, like in Messenger or text, a lot of times I'll put out, hey, thanks for reaching out about this house. Are you looking for a home for yourself or for a friend? Mm. It gives them that out where they can say a friend and then still converse yeah but really it's not. like if you're asking them how many bedrooms and what size it's like they didn't talk to their friend that said they wanted a 3,542 square foot house you know what i'm saying yep, it's that, yep. right? uh, but you play along with it and then say hey where, what's the number i can reach out to your friend at you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's that's later but Sorry, go ahead, Dave. No, I, I like that. I mean, we, we don't do that right now. We, we kind of jump jump into like the whole beds, bath, and beyond. Yeah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but uh, no, we just jump into that stuff. And uh, But I like that of kind of giving them that out because, yeah, people people these days are just, you know, they, they've definitely got their guard up. And so you got to be careful with that. So I, I like that. So kind of just going back to like what you were saying. So if we look at this, guys. And, and if you've been on one of my trains in the past, you, you kind of know the strategy that I use where you got the landing page. You got, well, first you got your Facebook ad. They click on the Facebook ad, they go to the landing page. And then after they put in their name, phone, and email on that landing page, they'll hit a thank you page as Joe was talking about. Then on there, you can have like your phone number right there where it's like, hey, call or text me at this number for any other questions. Because like if they're going to call or text you right away, that's a pretty hot lead. Or kind of like you're saying right here, give them a little bit of an out, but a way that it still pushes them forward of saying, hey, or you can set up a call with me. And so like we use Calendly, um, it's appointment scheduling app that you can go through and set which days of the week that you're available and what times of days that you're available. The cool thing is it's 100% free and it syncs with your Google Calendar, Outlook Calendar, your iCal, like any one of your calendars that you use. And then it, it just all happens on autopilot. So the lead clicks on the Facebook ad, opts in the landing page, clicks on that, goes schedule the appointment, and then it syncs with your calendar, syncs with their calendar, 
and it notifies both of you guys before the appointment actually happens so that you don't get that typical like, oh, I forgot about the appointment or whatever the excuse is because they didn't show up, right? So anyway. That's never happened, Jason. How <laughs> dare you even accuse that of ever happening? I don't know what you're talking about. It happened to me once. It happened once. So I just remember, you know. <laughs> no, so anyway, guys, so that, that's kind of what we're talking about. And like the, the nice thing about technology and automation these days is you can have all this stuff happening simultaneously of like the, you know, as soon as they opt to the landing page, having the email going out, having the text message going out, um, you're getting notified that the lead came in so you can see that data so you can call them as soon as you can get to it or having your assistant call them. And then they go to the landing page, they can go through, set up that appointment with you, right? And then if they don't do that initially, you can send out an email the next day. You can send out a text the next day. You can send like over the next seven days or so. I think, Joe, I think it was you maybe who told me this, but I think there's like an agent in Florida. Yeah, is it like three no, times? He's in Cali. He's in, he's in San Diego. Oh, San Diego. Okay, so he, he follows up uh, three times a day, was it? For three this? calls, three texts, and three emails every day. So nine touches for seven days. Yeah. And, and Heck yeah, but he only gets 16 leads a month and he closes eight of them. So that and everybody's like, everybody's like, yeah, but won't they be kicked off? And it's like, no, you know what happens when you do that? They call back and they say, I'm so sorry. I kept missing your call. And it's so hilarious. I'm, it's like they're, they're calling like, man, cool. And you're like, Hey, it's no problem. It's just, just you know, I'm a guy. That's I, right. That's <laughs> right. No. So, I mean, like, and that, that goes to the, to the point of like, you know, if, if you're kind of scared of that, like, oh, well, am I going to be annoying or whatever? Y yeah, you possibly could. But it's like, if your numbers are going to go from like one out of 20 closings to eight out of 16, 50% of the deals are closed or the, the leads. I mean, is it worth it to you on, on that part? You know what I mean? Like that, those numbers right there speak to it of like, and the thing is, like you're saying, people respect persistence and they they respect like that you're going out and doing your job and they if they see that you're as persistent with getting in touch with them like if they're needing to sell a home they're going to want to hire you too because they're like man this guy like he's on or this girl's on top of things like gets things done you know so anyway i just remember that example still and i was like man that's, yeah, that's such I, a powerful that a part of, i mean i don't know how deep we're going here today obviously we can't do a four hour long yeah uh, no like, we'll we'll wrap up here we'll just go another five or so minutes but um okay. yeah any other things let's that talk you about the voicemail then because there's there's another big point and this is there was one thing i could leave everybody with that would probably just radically change your follow-up and your back end um it would be this pregnant pause make an offer make an offer like people still i don't care if they're a second third time home buyer they still don't understand how real estate agents work for the most part like yeah. they don't really care either that to them you're just a professional door opener you're not you provide a lot more value than that but that's what they say that's how yeah. the rest of the world looks at agents yeah and so when we talk about and I'm, I'm looking at my notes here because i want to just share a couple of things and I actually, I had this recognition and that same agent um, who does that um, has this great offer. When he leaves a voicemail, he actually leaves the entire offer on the voicemail, breaking another rule. Pretty much anything you've been told to do, like do the opposite. Um, like don't bother them too many times. Yes, bother them way more than you should. Um, you know, don't leave a long voicemail. Leave a really long voicemail. Okay, so here, here's, here's, a, here's his thing. And I'm stealing this from a guy named Jonathan Zabrocki. Um, but he says, he'll be like, Hey, thanks so much, you know, uh, for reaching out, you know, so what has you calling on this new home? Like, are you looking for how big of a home? I've got so many questions for you. I can't wait to help you out. You know, our last client that we helped out, we were able to get them a house really, really quickly. It was the house of their dreams. They're so excited. And I wanted to share with you what makes us different in the way that we work. So the first thing I want to share with you is the three, this is all in a voice now. Yeah. There's the three promises that I like to make. First of all, I promise you that if we work together, I'm going to be on time every single time. And if I'm not on time to any meeting that I have with you, I will pay you $1,000. Number two, my second promise, I'm going to do what I say I'm going to do every time. If you ever call me on it and I fail to do what I said I'm going to do, again, I'm going to give you $1,000. Promise number three is I'm going to be brutal, brutally honest with you. I don't want to like 
candor to you and tell you things that aren't true. If I'm not brutally honest with you, again, I owe you a thousand dollars because that is my promise to you. But not only that, there's three things I'm going to do for you. Jason's like, holy cow, this is a long voicemail. No, First of great. all, I'm going to consult with you to help you make a wise decision about real estate. All right. Number two, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to negotiate for you. I'm going to treat your money like it's my money. And I hope that's okay with you because I want to make sure that you're not getting raked over the coals. Number three, I'm going to handle all the details for you. So there's a lot of details in a real estate transaction. There's actually over 381 details in every real estate transaction on average. But the bottom line is I'm going to get the job done for you. Oh, and one last thing. There's three performance guarantees I'd like to give to you. Promise number one. I guarantee I'll save you $10,000 off of any house you purchase, or I'm going to write you a check for $1,000. I guarantee that my experience, I don't care what you've bought in the past, a car, a skateboard, a house, your experience with me will be the best you ever had. And if not, at closing, I'll pay you $1,000. And lastly, I guarantee you that as my newest client, you can cancel at any time. I'm that certain that you'll love my service. And if you can cancel at any time, there's no cost to you whatsoever. Is that a good deal? Now, real quick, if you could just reach out to me. If I don't hear from you in three hours, I'll give you a call back. I'm going to go look for a couple other houses that may meet the same criteria, but I'm looking forward to talking to you soon. Thanks so much. That's awesome, man. That's great. It's just baller. It's not mine, right? Yeah. You gave it free, free for the world to use. The point isn't that offer. Some of you are like, well, what if I'm in a market that I can't save them $10,000? Okay. Find another way to save them five thousand dollars and guarantee that. Find a coupon book that saves them five thousand dollars on all their new home furniture purchases, or whatever you need to do, right, to make that stuff happen. Or find a different promise that you're willing to make that would be valuable to them. Now you've made an offer. It's crazy, but it's like in real estate, we forget to make an offer when our whole job is making offers, right? We remember to make the offer when it's time to write the contract out, but we never make the offer to the buyer or seller of real estate. Offer it. Provide some guarantees. Provide some huge value. What Jason said at the beginning of this call, provide value. That is value, right? Yep. Love it, man. I love it. Okay, well, cool, guys. Well, hopefully hopefully everyone got something out of today's, uh, today's little call right here as far as like the follow-up. I can't stress enough, guys. Know your numbers. Just get it, get it done. If it takes some time, if you if you want to like cheat and ask me what the numbers are, like I've worked with a lot of agents. Joe's worked with a lot of agents. We kind of know a little bit of what the numbers are, right? So um, you guys can reach out to us. Comment down below on the video as well. And I, as you guys know, I respond to every single one of the comments to make sure you guys are getting your questions answered. But um, yeah. So anyway, guys, if you guys enjoyed this video today. Go ahead, give it a thumbs up. We'll probably, you know, if, if you guys like it, we'll have Joe back on because I think Joe adds and brings a lot of value, not only on the follow-up stuff. Joe. Vote but, for Joe. Yeah, yeah that's Joe. right. <laughs> <laughs> so give a thumbs up for Joe. Comment down below. Let us know what you guys thought. And if this is you guys' first time on the channel, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button because I launch a new video every single day on how to generate more leads, make more money, and grow your business. Thanks so much, guys, and we'll see you all tomorrow.